Hey, Algebra 2, welcome to lesson 110. Listen carefully, I said 110 because even though your homework sheet says 110 and 111, 110 actually was a little bit weirder than I remembered it being. So I'm not going to combine both lessons today, which means that we're just gonna focus on 110 and that's what you're gonna do for homework today, okay? So this one's weird because look, you have, first you think it's gonna be easy. X plus two times X minus three is greater than zero. Okay, cool. I'll solve for X on X plus two, I'll solve for X on X minus three and I'll get my inequalities, but honestly, that's not gonna work because it's not that individually X plus two has to be greater than zero and X minus three has to be greater than zero. No, together they have to be greater than zero, which means that the number has to be positive, right? Well, there's two ways to get two numbers multiplying by each other to become positive is that they're both positive or they're both negative, okay? So you have to keep that in mind, this this concept right here, that they're both positive or they're both negative, right? Because positive times positive equals positive, and negative times negative equals positive, okay? You have to keep that in mind for when you're solving this. So now we know that if we solve it normally, which is going to be our positive, positive way, okay? What I mean by that is that they're both going to come out as zero. We're going to solve it the normal way first, and that's going to be our positive, positive way, okay? So x plus 2 is um, greater than zero, and x minus 3 is greater than zero. So that means that x is greater than negative 2, and x is greater than 3, okay? But we are only going to use one of these, so we have to eliminate the other one quickly. So we can only be left with two inequalities, okay? So just you got you to gotta press me on that this is the process. Well, if we have numbers that are greater than negative 2, that's going to be negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, hasta eternidad, infinity, okay? And then you have numbers that are greater than, negative, uh, greater than 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Which one satisfies both of these inequalities? This one does. Anything that's greater than 3 is going to be greater than negative 2, right? But not everything that's greater than negative 2 is going to be greater than 3. Correct? So this is the only one that fulfills both. Because anything greater than 3 is also greater than negative 2. But not anything greater than negative 2 is greater than negative, is greater than 3. Negative 1 zero, one, and two are all greater than negative two, but not greater than three. So you have to do this one because they satisfy both. Okay, now flip these two, and that's gonna give you your negative answers. So you have x is less than negative two, and x is less than three, okay? Well, now which one satisfies both here? Anything that's less than three, is that less than negative two? No. 2, 1, 0, negative 1. Okay, those are all greater than negative 2. But anything less than negative 2 is also less than 3, right? Negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. So this one doesn't satisfy, but this one does. So now there's the inequality to graph on the number line, because that's what it says. Graph the solution on the number line. So you draw your number line. It's real numbers, but these are not included. So you're gonna go negative two here, but it's open. It's less than negative two, but it's greater than three. And then any number will satisfy. You wanna try a number? Give me a number that's greater than three. Let's do four. Four plus two is six. Four minus three is one. Six times one is six, and that's greater than zero. Let's try a number down here, negative three. Negative three plus one is negative one. And pardon, negative three plus two is negative one. Negative three minus three is negative six. Negative six times negative one is positive six and it's greater than zero. Okay, so that's how you would do that process. So listen carefully again. You see inequality is greater than zero with two x's, right? You're gonna see it in the next problem with x squared, factoring first. You have to come up with your positive positive, that's your two normals. Okay, doing the individuals to solve for x. Then you have to flip those to do your two negatives over here. Then you need to pick one inequality from both pairs that satisfies both of the inequalities in that pair. And that's gonna give you what you need to graph on the number line. Okay, so let's look at number two. 
we're gonna have one more step here because we're gonna have to um, factor. So we have x squared minus two x. I'm gonna make a negative three is greater than or equal to zero. Your d domain is integers. Okay, so I already moved the three from the other side over to here so we can factor. So here we go, let's factor here. What are the factors of negative three that are gonna add up to equal negative two? It's gonna be one and three, negative and positive, because negative three times one is, I mean, negative three plus one is negative two. Okay, so now that we know, x is gonna be greater than or equal to three when we solve for this one, and x is gonna be greater than or equal to negative one when we solve for this one. Okay, so those are your two positives. Let's get our two negatives. So it's going to be x is greater than or equal to 3. Pardon, less than or equal to 3. And x is going to be less than or equal to negative 1. Okay? Now we need to see which one we're going to cross out and which one we're going to keep. Anything greater than 3 is going to be greater than negative 1. So we're going to keep this one, but not that one. Okay? So you're picking the biggest number here on the greater. Then you pick the smallest number here. Anything less than negative one is also less than three, so we have that one. So now on your number line, okay, it has to be less than negative one, including negative one, but it has to be greater than negative, greater than three, including three. Ah, integers. Ugh. Sorry, I forgot it was integers. So four, five, two, infinity negative two, negative three, to infinity, okay? Because you can't include all the, all the things on the number line because those are not integers. Those are just real numbers, okay? So go ahead and try your practice. Not a long lesson, just one that you need to make sure you process before we go into 111. Go ahead and try your practice. Okay, guys, so your practices look like this. Letter A is this number line. Letter B is this number line. Here on letter A, it was x is greater than 2 and x is greater than negative 1, okay? So your two positives, two negatives are x is less than negative 1, x is less than 2. The biggest one here is 2 because anything greater than 2 is going to be greater than negative 1. Lesser 1 is negative 1 because anything less than negative 1 is also going to be less than 2. Put it on the number line without including negative 1 and 2, but since they're real numbers, you just color everything. This one's integers. I had a factor first. That's x plus 1 times x minus 4 is greater than or equal to 0. That's x is greater than or equal to negative 1, and x is greater than 4. And then the negatives are x is less than negative 1, and x, x is less than 4. They were integers, but they did include negative 1 and 4, so your graph looks like that. If you have any questions, just let me know. Bye!